All right, guys, welcome to this tutorial. Um, today I will be talking about recursion. Um, recursion is possible in basically every programming language. Um, I can't think of an instance where it's not. Uh, so I will show you how to do it in Java. Um, and it's quite simple, and it's actually a really simple concept. However, many people seem to do it incorrectly. Um, and use it when it's not supposed to be used. So I'm going to go over two things. Um, I'm going to show you what a, uh, what recursion is and how to use it, and I am going to show you when not to use it. So let's get started. Um, you'll notice that I have commented out the point object because we are not working with objects in this tutorial. We will, again, don't worry, they're not gone forever. Um, but for now, not now. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is use a factorial as an example. Now, if you don't know what a factorial is in mathematics, it is a number that multiplies by itself, uh, decrementing once, getting down to zero. So if that didn't make any sense, it's basically like this. Say we had a factorial of five, right? So five would, um, the factorial of five would be equal to this. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If we had a factorial of 8, it would be equal to 8 times 7 times 6 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's make a method that will calculate that factorial. Now it's pretty simple. Um, what we're going to be doing is making a method that will take a parameter um, with a number, of course, so a factorial, um, and we will calculate that factorial by using recursion, by calling the method over and over again. So here's what we're going to do. Let's write public static int uh, calculate factorial, and let's have one argument, int num. All right, so we're good to go. Now we're going to create an if statement. Um, so if the number we passed is less than or equal to 1, uh, excuse me, let me de delete these. If that is so, we will return 1. If that is not true, else, then we will return the number times calculate factorial and we will pass in num minus 1. So I will start off by explaining this. So basically, if the number passed, so let's say we passed 5, is less than or equal to 1, then we will return 1. Since it's 5, that will not happen. It will go to the else statement. Let's say we passed 1. Well, that is true, so it will return 1. Now, why will this return 1? Well, remember my ex explanation ex explanation of factorials is that a factorial is itself multiplied all the way down to zero. So one times one is equal to one, so obviously we're going to return one. If that's not true, we are going to return this. We are going to return the number times calculate factorial. But at that moment, we will also pass the number minus one. So for example, let's say we passed five, right? We will return number times the factorial of 4. If we have 4, we will return 4 times the factorial of 3. If we had 3, we will return the factorial of, uh, we will return 3 times the factorial of 2, and so on and so forth. And that's what's so cool about recursion, is it lets you go through this method over and over and over again. Now, we could use a for loop, however, that would be a lot more complicated, and it's a lot more simple to use this. Um, and in certain instances, uh, recursion is faster. So this is good to know. So what are we going to do now? We're going to test this. So let's make um, system.println in our main method, um, and we will type the factorial of 5 and plus calculate factorial, and we'll pass in 5. All right, so this will calculate the factorial of 5. Let's run this program. 
you see if I run this, it says the factorial of 5 is 120, right? So how do we know that's correct? Well, let's manually test it. Below this, I'm going to make another system up printlin, and I'm going to do 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right, let's run this again. And it says the same exact number. So that just goes to show that this recursion method is working. Um, so what happened here? I already kind of explained this, but I'll go over it again. Um, what happened was we passed, we called calculate factorial uh, with a parameter of 5. So it checked to see if the number was less than or equal to 1, which it wasn't. So it went here, and it returned 5 times the factorial of 4. So how did it get that factorial of 4? Well, it went to the beginning of this method, and it tried it with 4 this time. And then it did 4 times the factorial of 3. How did it get 3? It went to 3 this time, and so on and so forth. So recursion is kind of like um, a heavy-duty for loop. Um, it's like it's like an advanced for loop in a way, um, or a loop in general, while loop, etc. Um, so it's very uh, an interesting way to loop through things and a lot more efficient. Um, but here is a time where recursion is not good. Um, you can have loops that can run for hours. That's how powerful they are. Recursion is not that powerful. They're very um, logical, but they're not that powerful, and I'll explain why. Um, one of the errors that can be thrown by recursion is called stack overflow. Stack overflow um, is an exception, and what that means is Java works in a certain way um, where it has a stack, uh, a stack of memory to handle and dole out all these commands. Um, if you send way too many commands to that stack, the stack overflows and throws an error and stops the application. So you need to make sure you're not overloading the stack, uh, which is basically like the main hub for memory. So let me explain. I am going to make a stack overflow error um, inside a recursive method. So how do I do that? Just do another recursive method. Let's write one. So public static void example doesn't take any parameters. And how will we make the simplest stack overflow? Let's just type example. All right. We are ready to break our application. Let's delete this factorial stuff and let's write example. Alrighty, here we go. If I run this and press OK, you will see this big gross error. So let's scroll all the way up to the top and you'll see it says exception in thread main java.lang.stack overflow error. This is what we want to look for. Ignore this. Look for this stack overflow error. That means that we recursed too deeply. We used recurse, uh, recursion too much. So how did this happen? Well, it started with this. We called example, right? And so it ran this method. And then example called itself, so it ran this method, example called itself, and ran this method, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. So that allocated way too much memory into the stack before it could be deallocated. And what do those two terms mean? Allocate means make room for, deallocate means give that room back. So that's basically what it did. It made room for this method to run but it did not have time to take away the memory for the method to continue. Um, and that's why the stack overflow error occurred. So that's why you never want to use recursion if you are having a really, really big loop. Um, and especially if the loop is too fast. Um, if you, I mean, a loop like this is fine. We only did five numbers five loops through totally fine enough time here we did like a couple hundred um, which is not good and which will break the compiler so that's why the error was thrown so just remember 
you can have safe recursion and you can have bad recursion. Just stick with this one. And if you need to do something like this, use a for loop. But as of now, that is all I have for you guys, and I will see you in the next tutorial.